what happened to shoujo manga and can it possibly get to where it was once before <clears throat> that, that's kind of a hard question um i think the the thing is shoujo had its boom in the 70s where it got that you know the the year 24 we got uh, a lot of expansion and it was being a lot more experimental than shonen was at the time and it was it, shoujo was what was pushing uh, manga to uh, new horizons i feel and people were looking at it and were for the first time they were paying attention to it and you know it, that was around the time where it also started shifting away from well, well, the 60s as well, but they started shifting away from guys writing stories that they thought that girls would like to women writing stories that they knew women would like. I don't know exactly what happened. I think we just evolved um, as a whole, not just shoujo. I think pretty much the manga as a whole evolved into tropes where this thing works. We're going to do a lot of this. And, you know, we, we got to a point where Chojo is romance and what sells uh, in Chojo is romance. We're going to do a lot of that. And I'm going to be honest, I don't know too much about the current landscape of Chojo. I want to get a little bit more into it and even a little bit more into Chojo in general, the old stuff and the new stuff. Because um, those videos that I did um, and the works that I read, thanks uh, to those videos and thanks um and in general, Chojo were a lot to do with some friends of mine that are super into Chojo, and they were the ones that kind of led me and showed me like this is these other works that were, that were important, and this is the things that you should read. But yeah, I really I want to, and I need to get more into it. Um, as far as, as if I think it can move on from that, I think you always can. I think manga, I think art forms in general, not just manga, I think eventually reach a point where they need to reinvent itself and evolve. We are seeing that with Shonen right now, I feel. And I think with Shoujo, eventually it will come as well. You do bring up a good point about Shonen and how it's definitely going through a, a maturing phase. And it's a very interesting phase. Let's come to that in a quick moment. But before we leave this topic, you said something that is something that a lot of people don't realize because maybe they weren't paying attention to shoujo for very long, but shoujo has evolved into romance. There are mm -hmm. a lot of romance series that I see today, and while I can appreciate it, I love romance, you know, I, I, I grew up on sitcoms, so I can always yeah. go for a quirky will they, won't they, but at the same time, seeing Fruits Basket get the overwhelming praise that season three got and people now latching onto it even though this is a show decades old it, it, fruits basket was one of the the big series at the tail end of the popularity of shoujo and it's very reflective of the era that it was published in and i absolutely love that series i love his and her circumstances i uh, Kari Kano. i love a lot of those series but you see elements of them adapted into today's series in the form of romance and even with magical girl a lot of that like any magical girl thing it takes elements of shoujo too but they lose that essence of shoujo whether it's the art style or the pacing or the storytelling nana was one of the last great shoujos and i think because of the hiatus a lot of people forgot it and now it's being left to history but shoujo yeah. is such a interesting pioneering genre yeah and, and you bring fruits basket and i read fruits basket a couple of years ago and the idea that I had uh, of it was uh, romance manga, uh, a traditional shoujo romance. And then I, when I read it, I realized it wasn't that at all. There's all so much more to it that I don't think people realize. And especially with uh, the, you know, the people um, with the My Name List, the, um, that Fruits Basket got number one place. And a lot of people were, were saying that the shoujo number one place made no sense. I think people; those were the people that didn't really uh, watch Fruit Basket to understand just how much more to it that the manga and the anime have. And for anyone who picks up on this and their ears perk up, please look into that series and realize there's so much more than what is advertised. And that's one of Shoujo's greatest skills. I don't know if I love Shoujo more than Shonen. 
But at the same time, I think the storytelling aspects of shoujo interest me more, perhaps as I get older and I appreciate what a writer can do aside from just drawing very nice pictures and really interesting transitions and battle scenes. But I, I don't know whether it's Vampire Knight or or Kare Kano or any of these older series, uh, even if it's something like To Love Ru, which is definitely geared for boys, but you can yeah. tell it's pulling from shoujo-esque areas. There's so much more to, to shoujo. There definitely is.